Ephesians chapter number 6, we're just going to read one verse this morning and hope that God be a help to us. Verse number 15, it says, And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you for this day. Lord, we're thankful, Lord, for what you've done in our hearts, that we can come and have a good time, Lord. But we're also thankful, Lord, that we can come and worship you this morning. Lord, we're thankful that no matter what has happened in our country up till now, that we do still live in a country, Lord, that we had the freedom to come and worship you this morning. Lord, I ask you just help us now this morning. If there be anybody in here that's lost, help them see their need for salvation, Lord, as you dipped that one into jail. Lord, we're so thankful for your continued work over there and helping those folks. Lord, we just ask you to just meet with us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. By way of introduction, the first thing I'm going to look at, and brother, uh, our pastor even talked about this a little bit on uh, Wednesday night in the, in the verse that he read out of Philippians, is we see the person here in verse number 15, and it says, in your feet. You know, that's what I like about the, the, the Bible, Brother Phil, is just the, the personal level that it's on, that it, every time you read it, you know, we can look at the whosoever, that, that whosoever means me. And we can look right here and it says, your feet. And that's what we'll talk about a little bit later on. But just the, the, person, the personal of the Bible, how personal it is when you open up and read it, of it speaking directly to you. So not only do we see the personal uh, aspect of this verse, but we also see the placement. Uh, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of, feet, of, of peace. Uh, that placement of having it on your feet, why is that important? Well, there's a lot of things you could read into on why it's important to, of being having your feet protected here in this whole uh, scripture that it's talking about, having on the whole armor of God. Um, but that placement and it being on your feet also goes and leads into the preparation. What are we prepared for? The preparation of the gospel of peace. What are we prepared for? What are you prepared when you walk out of this place on Sunday evening and you go out into the world on Monday, whether it be your job or whether it just be in the world, no matter what it is that you may do, are you prepared for what the world's going to throw at you? Are you prepared even for the fact of, uh, of just... Uh, of, of doing God's will in your life, brother Phil. Are you prepared for what God has for you to do? Have you sought God's will uh, when you're in church and God, show me somebody to share the gospel with today. Show me somebody to just try to be an encouragement to today. Not only are you, are you prepared to do God's will, are you prepared to just proclaim the gospel as we walk out of there? It is a lost and dying world that has everything else in the world being proclaimed to them on a daily basis. Are we prepared to proclaim the gospel to them? And not only do we see the, the person, the placement, and the preparation, but that verse ends when it talks about that little word, peace. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The last thing that I shared over uh, in jail this morning was talking a little bit about that peace. That I believe, the, the, just my opinion, this is strictly my opinion, one of the things that set us apart from anything else is the peace that only God can give. The peace that passeth all understanding. Why is it you can see people who are saved on their deathbed not worrying about hell, not scared about what's going on? Why? Because it's the peace that only God can give. When you go out and you see everything in this world that's going on, and you see all the, the craziness that's going on, everything that they believe and all the stuff they're trying to push, why is it that the Christian, while we can get aggravated, while we can become upset, but why can we still have just that peace that only God can give? So we see that verse, Ephesians chapter number 6, verse 15, just talking about, strictly when it comes to the whole armor of God, talking about your feet, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. What I want to preach on this morning is just this thought, what's on your feet? What do you have on your feet this morning? It didn't work, I'm already getting a drink. What do you have on your feet this morning? I have three pairs of shoes that I'm afraid it's too many of us have on, and then three pairs of shoes we need to make sure we put on. Can I say the first pair of shoes that too many of us, and I, I debated on even bringing all these shoes in, the first pair of shoes that I think too many of us have on, Brother Ray, is we have on our running shoes. Now, it's easy for us to go to the Bible and say, you know, bodily exercise profiteth little, and we can joke about that a lot, but that's not what I'm talking about. Too many of us have our running shoes on, and we're continually running from what God has for us in our life. Too many of us are like Jonah there in chapter number 1 and verse number 3, and it says, But Jonah rose up to flee into Tarshish from the presence of the Lord, and went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof, and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from 
the presence of the Lord. God had told him to go to Nineveh, and he went the opposite direction and go to Tarshish. That's exactly what too many of us are do. God has laid out something he wants us to do, and we're too busy running away from everything he would have us to do. Not only just in the will of our life, too many of us are running from the salvation that God wants us just to get saved. You look at that rich young ruler, came to Brother Sammy, came to Jesus, says, what must I do to have eternal life? And Jesus tells him what he needs to do, and he tells him all these things I've kept from my youth up. And then he tells him to sell everything he has, and he immediately turns and walks away from God. See, too many of us are convinced that we're going to be okay. There are some new people here, so I'll share this a little bit. It was uh, uh, roughly around 11 and a half years ago uh, uh, now that this took place. You have to understand, I was 14 years old, I believe it was, and I remember sitting in a, uh, a youth service on a Wednesday night, Brother Ron, and I remember in that youth meeting, that youth service that night, them asking, who wants to go to heaven? Well, like anybody here, if you've been in church any part of time, you believe anything about heaven and hell, if you were asked that question, who wants to go to heaven, I raised my hand. I remember raising my hand. I remember the very next Sunday, Brother Phil getting baptized. I would go to church, Brother Sammy. Uh, I didn't go as faithfully as I should, but went to church off and on. More often went than not. And then, lo and behold, uh, you know, a few years later, I guess about four or five, about three or four years later, uh, me and Sister Tina started dating. Started going to church with her. We got married, ended up going to church at, there at, at her church for I don't know how long we was there, four or five years. In 2001, we came to Emmanuel Baptist Church. I wasn't here at Emmanuel Baptist Church very long, Brother Sammy, and I would leave every service. God tell me, you're lost, and you're going to die and go to hell. And see, I, I didn't run to God. No, I continually tried to run away from Him. No, I'm not lost. I, I know I'm saved. Remember, I got baptized. I can take you back to where I got baptized at. Brother Ron, I, I, I tried to teach Sunday school. I taught the kids. I helped in the kids' program. I surrendered to preach. I was going to the jail every Sunday like we are now, Brother Phil. And would still sit in service and walk out of here, you're going to die, lost, and go to hell. And then finally, thank God, you know, I continued to run. And, and look, I, I, I knew the answer to this was to get out of here. I went all the way to Indiana. And look, God's not in Indiana. That's why we got folks that come all the way over here. So I was convinced that God, that, that I could get everything right by going to Indiana. Went over to Indiana, was going to help a preacher over there, start his kids' program. Now, I remember the very first Sunday that I was supposed to officially be over there, I remember that preacher saying, you can be a great person this side of eternity, and you can be a great person that side of eternity. But if you've not saved, you've not accepted Jesus Christ in your heart, you'll spend eternity as a great person and still spend it in hell. For whatever reason, that one finally rung with me, Brother Phil. And I remember coming back that Sunday afternoon, sitting at the house, feeling sorry for myself all day. And that Monday morning, November the 7th, 2011, around 3 o'clock in the morning, right next to the same exact chair that still sits in the corner of our bedroom, that recliner got down and asked God to save me. And I don't ever have that doubt since then. I've never had that doubt since then when you finally stop running from God. There's too many of us, too many people, maybe even some sitting here this morning, that are running away from God and what God wants to do from you. Too many of us have our running shoes on. Not only do too many of us have our running shoes on, too many of us have our loafers on. Too many of us are too comfortable sitting around doing nothing. In Mark chapter number 13 and verses 35 through 36, he says, Watch ye therefore, for ye know when the master of the house, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at even or at midnight, or at the cock crowing or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he finds you sleeping. Too many of us are sitting around in our loafers, and that's exactly how he's going to find us when we come back. He's going to find us sleeping. I heard this week, uh, this was a story, and I'll tell you where this happened at when I get close to the end of it. If you've paid any attention to anything going on, and I don't want to say the news, just anything in general going on, uh, you know, I guess they're allowing a lot of these libraries to have these, uh, um, I don't know if you just want to say drag show books or all this nonsense being read. And Kirk Cameron started a thing where he wanted to be able to go around and read his book. I don't know what everything about his book, don't know everything about his beliefs, but it all had to at least stem from just uh, love one another, just God, and just more things that we're in tune with than the other side. He showed up at this library here a couple weeks ago. A few weeks back, there was him. And if you remember Duck Dynasty, I believe it was, um, um, Jace Robertson, his wife, Missy. And then if you remember the girl that had her, uh, I don't remember if it was her arm or leg, bit off by the shark, and she continued to surf. And, and, and so she has a book written, and, but she had somebody else going to read the book for him at this library. And so they, they booked this library to come, and they was all ready to go, and they said the person at the library, whoever runs that library, 
called and said, I don't know who you all are, Brother Clint, said, but this is great, man. We've had never had such a turnout of all the people said they were going to come. And I heard this week they said they showed up and there was hundreds, if not maybe a thousand people standing outside in the rain waiting to get in to hear them come and read their books. So they read their books and they began to try to do a promotional shoot, uh, just a quick commercial trying to uh, promote their books and things like that that all centered around the things of God and centered around uh, what God truly is and those kind of things. And everybody in the library started trying to make a bunch of noise and just made some bunker racket and all trying to get them, uh, uh, trying to keep them from being able to record things. So then they began to ask questions. Well, come to find out, I don't know how you wouldn't know who they are, but the librarian that booked him had no idea who Kirk Cameron was. He didn't like what he stood for. So instead of canceling, he made sure that he made a point to tell everybody to do everything you could to disrupt. They would play music very loud, do anything they could to disrupt what was going on. Can I say that is what the other side wants to do? What are we doing to disrupt them? See, we've gotten too lazy that we're just sitting back and say, hey, I'm saved, I'm on my way to heaven. I can't, the Bible tells me in the end, perilous times shall come, so there's, there's nothing I can do to change it anyway. And we allow the devil to keep us from fighting for what the truth truly is. Too many of us have our loafers on. Now, this one might get me in trouble, but it, it, it is what it is. God gave it to me, so take it up with him. This isn't ladies. You might have boots on here, fellas. You might have some big old boots on, but too many of us are wearing our heels around. We're thinking we're a little bit above everybody else. We're thinking we're a little bit better than everybody looking down our noses at everybody else. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 18, Pride goeth before destruction, but here, and a haughty spirit before a fall. We, we get that. That's exactly it, Brother Phil. We think we're too good. Hey, you know, and I'm not, I'm not trying to, to I'm not trying to pick on anybody, but this is just me, what God laid in my heart. Too many of us, you wouldn't dare to go over in jail with us because those people, like, we need to go preach to them, but that's for you, Brother Josh. That's for you, Brother Phil. That's not for me to go over there. I, I don't need to find myself in jail. I don't need to walk through that nasty place and see all those people. Really? You look down on those people? Can I tell you the sweet spirit that we have over there Sunday after? Even when God did, last week, I don't believe God saved anybody over it, But it was a very sweet spirit in both the men's and the ladies' service. Why? Because most of those people, hey, maybe they're putting on a good show, but you know what? They're doing a pretty good job of it. Coming in there wanting to hear the gospel preached, wanting to hear something from God. Too many of us have on our heels walking around looking down on one another, looking down on others who we believe are below us or don't have the same beliefs or thoughts or whatever it is that we do. Three pairs of shoes that we need to put on. The first thing, the first kind of shoes that we need to put on is we need to get our dress shoes put on. Why do you say dress shoes? Well, because I already just alluded to, everybody else walk around in sneakers, walk around in loafers, walk around those kind of things. We need to be set apart. We need to be set apart when it comes to things of this world. We need to people to come and look at us. I know our pastor has talked about people paying attention to your shoes and are your shoes shined and are they, are they cleaned up? And we see, we already got one up here. He's already looking. He's already looking to see what his shoes look like. We need to have dress shoes on. We should be set apart from the things in the world. John, he'll never look at his shoes again now, will you? John chapter number 17 and verse number 16 says, They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world sanctify them through thy truth thy word is truth as thou hast sent me into the world even so I have I also sent them into the world and for their sake I sanctify myself that they also may be might be sanctified through the truth are we set apart and sanctified to God are we set apart and sanctified and doing what God would have us to do out in this world you know our pastors alluded to it I have said it I'm sure brother Ron and, and brother Phil have said it women it, it, you have those times when you go out and people walk up to you, you're a Christian, aren't you? But you get those questions when you're not in a suit and tie. Not going out on Sunday after church when you're all dressed up. Just when somebody can see something different about you when you go out on a Saturday to Menards and somebody says, are you a preacher? Are you a Christian? There's just something different about you. I can just tell something different is about you. How set apart are we? See, we have, we have a church age today my belief that it's too much tried to blend with the world instead of being set apart. 
you know, our pastor just alluded to it up the street. You have whatever that church is wanting people to allow whoever to come in and do whatever it is, you know, allow them to vote or do whatever it is of all things in the world that we think we have to have. And I don't know if it's because they think they need numbers, they need the church to grow, if they think they need more money, or whatever it may be to pull that in. But instead of having an effect on them and standing apart, we just want to seem to intermingle with all them and not be set apart. Not only do we need to have on dress shoes, not only do we need to be set apart, then I couldn't get away from this one. You, you know, as much, even though I haven't played as much as I used to, or as much as I have been, we all need to have a good pair of golf shoes on. Why golf shoes? Because they have spikes on the bottom of them. You get you a good pair of golf shoes, Brother Sam, you got spikes on them. You can You can grind in, right, Zach? You, you get in, you get that young, limber body, spin around and hit that ball real hard. You can dig in and make a stand and not move. See, too many times a week we like those running shoes and we like those loafers because and we just slide right on back. Somebody pushes against us. See, we don't have anything willing to make a stand and stand against anything of the world. Jeremiah tells us in chapter 6 and verse 16, it says, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in, thy, in the ways, and see, and ask for the old path, where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find the rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. See, we too many times we'll just come and go with, with whatever wind of doctrine the world brings about. We're not willing to make a stand on what the truth is. We're not willing to make a stand and say, no, you know, as our pastor, I've heard him say this many times, talking about you have a narrow mind. It's about that narrow right there. See, we no longer will be that narrow. We won't make a stand based on the book because we're afraid of who we might offend. We're afraid of who we might upset. We're afraid of what might happen, of what, uh, how somebody might get upset with us, and we'll just we'll go wherever everybody wants us to go. We're not willing to make a stand. You look back at the uh, you look back at the shoes they had at the time this was written in Roman shoulders, Roman shoulders soldiers. They had spikes. They had the ability to stand. They had the ability to climb rocky terrain. We're going to go out there, and it's not just about making that stand, but we're going to face things that we're going to have an uphill battle to climb out there in the world. Do you have on the shoes? Have you prepared yourself on your feet to make that stand? It is amazing how many people just automatically cower to everything that the world has to offer. You know, I, 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 I've, and this is, hopefully, maybe this will help you, I don't know, but God put it on my mind right now, so I'm going to say it. You have all this stuff that's going on, and I, I always say every year I'm going to go to one. I've never been to one. I hear they have great fish. They go to some of these fish fries, Brother Ron, that go on this time of year. And, and, and I work with some fellas and work with at least one of them I know that that's, he talks about going to the Catholic Church and they were talking about Lent and everything when all that started and giving stuff up. And, and, and you know, it seems to me, this is just my opinion, it seems to me like a lot of that's done just to say, hey, look at me, look what I did. It's not about spending the time with God. And you know, it's little things like that. If we're willing to look at it, because I remember sitting in lunch one day and I said, well, you know, I said, that's great. I said, that is wonderful. So the whole part of, the whole point of fasting isn't necessarily about just giving up food. Giving up something that you're going to spend that extra time with God. You're going to spend that time in prayer. Spend that time in the book. Spend that time learning more about Him. But see, too many times we're not willing to look for just that little door that God might open for us to be able to share something with somebody. We think it's got to be all out. Hey, you need to get saved and knock them upside the head with the Bible. No, sometimes it's just about being willing to make that stand and say, you know, this is what this truly means. I, I don't want to offend you about your religion. You believe what you want to believe, but this is truly what the Bible says about this. This is truly what the Bible means about this. Not giving up something because I feel better about myself, but truly being engulfed with what God would want me to do. We need some shoes that got some good spikes on us willing to make a stand. You know, it, it showed in 2020... Brother Doug talked about this, and, and Brother Randy even said this the other night, and I don't remember now exactly what it was Brother Doug talked about, uh, the next pandemic and when it's going to happen or what's going to take place. And Brother Randy said, 2025. And I laughed. I said, I've seen that same video you've seen. Them talking about the next thing that's going to come out in 2025 and all this, and if, if you have any idea, if you know the math, uh, we'll have a presidential election in 2024. And in 2025, the next Republican will take office, and then that's when everything's going to break loose again. Now, I don't know if that's true, if it's going to happen, or if it's going to not. I have no idea. But what are we going to do? What if it does happen again? I've preached, and I've said this many times. 
we take for granted, not even just Emmanuel Baptist Church, we take for granted just church in general. What's going to happen? We walk to the front door, and the locks and the padlocks are on the front door. And we used to think, oh, that can't happen. Well, it almost did. They almost did. And we can say, well, Brother Doug, he would make sure we would meet and have service. Absolutely, I believe from the bottom of my heart he would. What happens when the governor sends out a whole, you know, what, whatever, uh, reserve or, or whatever, uh, they, they call National Guard and, and lock it up and tell us we can't come in? What are we going to do? Are you going to be willing to make a stand and say, hey, that's fine, then we're going to preach out here in the parking lot and they can hear it as well. See, we, we think we have certain freedoms, but we've not been willing to make a stand when it comes to those things and where those freedoms are slowly eroding away that it very possibly could happen. It very possibly the next time, or it don't even have to be a next pandemic, it could just be they decide they want to do it. I seen something this morning about some boy up in Canada uh, that at a Catholic school made the comment that God created man and woman, created them separate, and that needed to be separate and have separate bathrooms, and he was arrested and taken off and told that he couldn't say that. At a Catholic school, like talking about the Bible. We have no idea what's coming. Are we going to be willing to make a stand? Are we going to be willing to make a stand and say, no, that's not right. This is what the Bible says. And stand and hear preaching and, and see the word of God be proclaimed throughout the land. We have a people that all goes back to that loafing around and those loafers on that we just want to sit back and enjoy things and not do anything. Which gets me to the last point of some shoes. Oh, no, not the last point. I forgot this. This was interesting. I heard this this week and I thought this was do not doubt your salvation. If you know you're saved, you are saved. But I found it very interesting, Brother Sammy, in Revelation chapter 21 and verse number 8. This is talking about people who are going to be partake in the lake of fire. And it talks about the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, the whoremongers, the sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. You know what the very first three words of that, Brother Phil, are? The first group of people that it talks about will have that in the lake of fire, the fearful, the cowardly. Those that aren't willing to make that. I'm not saying not willing to make a stand because you're saved, you're not going to the lake of fire. Okay, Don't misunderstand me. But too many people claim to be saved and say they're saved, and maybe they're not, and instead they're just too cowardly to be willing to stand for the Bible. But the last set of, boot, the last set of shoes that we need is we need to get on our work boots. Matthew chapter number 9 and verse 37. And then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. What are you doing for God right now? Can I say this? I am very thankful you're at church this morning. It is a nasty, nasty morning out there. 30 degrees, wind blowing. When I walked into jail, it was spitting sleet or something. I was getting wet and I couldn't see it, so it wasn't snowing, so I don't know what it was doing. It is nasty, miserable morning this morning i know that our pastor that the, the good preaching you're normally used to hearing isn't going to be here this morning so i know it would have been very easy to stay at home so i i greatly appreciate you being here this morning this isn't working for the lord this isn't doing a work for god i appreciate and i hope to see every one of you and i hope to see more here support brother ron tonight i hope to see even more of you here wednesday night this isn't working for god what are you truly doing to do something for God? We alluded to back at the beginning, the very first point to, on our running shoes. Too many of us are running from what God would have us to do. We get it in our minds that, well, I can't do this because whatever, which means you've automatically broken the second rule of the church using the word, I can't. Because God tells us, I can. The Bible tells me, I can. But too many times we seem to get in this mindset that, hey, I'm coming to church, Brother Ron. I'm at church, and hey, maybe you even teach Sunday school, and maybe you even lead prayer, and those things are wonderful. Are you doing it for Him? Are you doing it for His glory? There is, I, I mentioned this over at the jail this morning. I hadn't done it in a long time. You look at everything that it takes to make Emmanuel Baptist Church run. And look, I'm not saying that, that, that Brother Ray is going to have to have help this year mowing the yard. He likes to do it. You can't help him anyway. You tell him you'll be here on Thursday, and he's already mowed it on Wednesday. You know, Brother Randy can, can attest to that. You know, he might not let you help him. But there's a lot of things around the church that could be done. Our pastor has often said he's, a, he's in favor of everything. He just can't do everything. 
We have mentioned for the last two or three years, we have a, a, I am so thankful for the group that we have that go out on Monday Monday afternoons. It is a blessing to see 20, 30, 35 people show up to go out on visitation. All the kids that show up and go out on visitation. And you say, well, I can't go Monday night. We have said it many times. Tell me what night you can go. I have a whole binder back there that I have probably, I don't know, 50 some or 30 some weeks wrote out on. I have a bunch of note cards. You want to tell me, say, hey, brother Josh, we're going to go out on, we can't come Monday, but we'll come on Thursday. Okay, here you go. Here's who can drive the bus, or here's where you can go together, and here's note cards. Say exactly where to go. Here's exactly where we need you to go. But see, we, we just make our excuse. Well, they go on Monday nights, and I can't go. I'd be the only one to go. You don't know that. There might be some that go on Monday nights that would be more than happy to go with you and go a second time. Or maybe just that might be a day that works best for them. What are you truly doing for the Lord? Not coming, it amazes me the amount of people that think that, hey, we're, we're coming to church and we're doing this, so we're good. That's not why God saved us. God did not save us to sit in a church pew. God did not save us to sit in a church pew and go through life and say, hey, well, I told my family, I told my mom, my dad, my brother, my sister, whatever it may be, I try to be a witness to them, that should be enough. Is it? And maybe it is. Maybe that's all God wanted you to do. But have you truly sought God's will for his life? Too many times, let's go back to the one of the other ones. We got loafers on. We're just too lazy to want to do anything. We're too lazy to ask God, God, what do you want me to do? Because we're afraid of what the answer might be. God might not want you to be a missionary to, uh, 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 to the Caribbean. He might not want you to be a preacher. He might not want you to be a preacher's wife. He might want you to be, but I do know he wants you to be the best version of you that you can be. He wants you to be the best Brother Ray. He wants you to be the best Miss Matea. He wants you to be the best uh, Brother Jim. He wants you to be the best uh, Brother Jack. Whoever it is, he wants you to be the best version of you you can be and do whatever it is that he has for you to do. I I, I alluded to this at the beginning, and I alluded to this at jail this morning. God has a purpose for all of us. Are you fulfilling what his purpose is for your life? Have you truly got down and sought God and say, God, what is this? What I am doing here, is that all you want me to do? God, is it you need me to go someplace else? I don't want to lose anybody, but I also don't want you to be here if God don't want you here. God, do you need me to be somewhere else? Do you need me to go help Brother Sammy in the Caribbean? Do you need me to go help this church in, in, in Montana or this church in California or whatever it may be? God, do you need, what, what is it, what is your purpose for my life? and truly put our work boots on, and truly get about doing a work for God. The world is doing all it can to work for the things of the world. They are putting... The one thing I will say about some of these false denominations and these false churches and things like that, you know what they're doing? They're putting feet on their work. We can disagree with them all they want, but they won't hesitate to get out and do what they believe is right. But yet, we'll keep our loafers on and be lazy. Ask Sister Nay, Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. What are your feet shod with today? What's on your feet? What are you doing for God? Are you continually running from Him? You got your loafers on? Are you truly doing what God has us to do? Let's all stand while they're getting a song. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you again for this day. Lord, we're thankful for the Bible. Lord, we're thankful for the Scripture. Lord, we're thankful for the things that you can show us throughout your Word. Lord, I ask you to speak to hearts during this invitation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.